This is RC Super Fun Time, and I'm Kevin. Come on, y'all, let's go. Kev here with RC Super Fun Time. My good friend Brad behind the camera, as usual. Wanted to talk to you a little bit today about tools. Uh, there's lots of tools out there, a lot of junky tools, a lot of good tools. What tools do I buy? Depends on what car you got. Maybe not. Hang in there. I'll tell you what I use. All right, I'm sure I'm gonna leave some tools out, and I've probably got tools that no one else uses. I'm a little weird like that, but anyway, we're gonna go with it, all right? Allen wrench, or excuse me, hex wrench is the first thing that you're gonna need. Of course, you need it for almost every car. Uh, these are the best ones out there, MIP, all right? Inch and a half, or excuse me, one and a half millimeter, two millimeter, two and a half millimeter, pretty much take care of you. MIP, they make ball in now, but these are just the square end, which in my opinion, you need both. Uh, they're just tougher than they can be. They're, they fit tighter than any other Allen, uh, excuse me, hex rents I've ever used, but they don't really have much of a warranty. Um, for a ball end, I use Bondus. Bondus has an excellent warranty. I've actually put five of these in an envelope, mailed it to Bondus, and they just bailed, mailed me five new ones. Just as simple as that. I didn't even have to fill out no paperwork or anything. It's beautiful. So for the ball end tools, I use Bondus usually. All right. So I try. I usually have both. All right. The MIP and the Bondus. These little dudes here, MIP. I feel like I'm cheating when I use them. They go with my little Black and Decker or any type of drill you have. You just don't want one of these that's very powerful. So this is pretty weak, uh, but it's plenty strong for, for what I need. I've stripped plastic with it. Uh, it's got a little clutch on it, works great. Highly recommend one of these if you don't feel too bad about cheating. You're never gonna have four arms like Popeye if you use the old drill. Now this one is kind of split the difference. Look at the end of that guy. See, it's not really square, it's not really round. Can you focus on that, Brad? It's like a Weka. Weka, W-E-K-A, W-E-R-A, excuse me, Wera. Anyway, I like this, this is a good tool. Only one I have like this, two millimeter. Two millimeter is the one you use the most. Of course, you got this kind of stuff, all right? Just your regular old hex wrenches. These are standard. Uh, mostly is all you need is uh, metric, all right? But that's kind of your choice. They come in handy too. You also need a pokey stick, all right? You need a pokey stick. You gotta clean out all your little screws before you can get your tool in there. So I use something like this. I stole it from my dentist and I use it to clean the dirt out of the tools. You need these kind of drivers, all right? This one's seven millimeters, just a craftsman. I had it in my toolbox already. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's in your toolbox already you can use, like this. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Guess what? Seven millimeter, just like that. You don't have to buy something fancy like this or like this. These are all seven millimeter, okay? This is kind of small and wimpy, but it works just fine. Five and a half millimeter. I like the five and a half millimeter. Find more use for that. Guess what? Look, watch this. Five and a half millimeter. It's like magic, okay? Probably got this in your toolbox already. Everybody's got one of these, same kind of thing. Come with most of your RCs that you buy. Pretty sweet. And then you got the industrial strength version, like that. All right, now this one you actually need. I, I, I like this tool for tightening up my 17 millimeter stuff. I like the X-Max, uh, the Arma, uses this, get a good grip on it, get it pretty tight. This is my favorite one for that. But if you gotta get real mean with it, if you tend to strip out your wheel, something like this, you can really get down on it, works a little better, just don't break anything. This little guy's handy as it can be. Had it in my toolbox. Take any angle I want. I guess it's a teeny tiny breaker bar. Sweet. If you don't know what size it is, you can always fall back to this. So this is downright handy too. 
keep one of these around. I use it quite a bit. Then you get even smaller. These are fairly expensive, believe it or not. Uh, they cost more than something like this would, which this it was already in my toolbox. Probably got one in your toolbox, okay? These are four millimeter, and that's what you need for your tie rods and just in the camber and toe in, that kind of thing. Uh, this is a five and a half millimeter, basically same as that. There's some situations you cannot use this, okay? So you really need one of these. It's just some things you cannot get to without an actual wrench. I threw this in there, brushy tool, like the pokey tool, okay? And clean your stuff off with that. You can't work on it very well if it's all crapped up. I was talking about toe-in and camber. All right, here's your toe-in gauge, RPM. Not real awful expensive. It's awesome, works great. You need one. Camber, wicked cool. Not too much money, you need one, okay? If you're a basher like me, this stuff isn't critical, but it just handles a little bit better. If you, if you set it up properly, at least make sure it's even on both sides, right? Now, in order to do that, I use this a whole lot. All right, caliper. They make real fancy digital ones, okay? Cost you 50 bucks. This one was $6.50. It works just fine. I don't have to have an exact measurement here, folks. I'm just trying to mostly get it even on both sides. So this is, I use it a whole lot more than what you think. Downright handy. Zip ties, gotta have some of them. I usually pack these with me. If I'm going hiking, I'll throw a few in a bag because you just never know when something's trying to come loose, you don't want it to. And you need one of these to cut it when it's time to come off. All right, this kind of stuff, same thing. Sometimes you just, you gotta get mean with it. Gotta get a rough, rough with it. So I got a tiny pair. Needle nose pliers, same thing. Now, this isn't a Phillips screwdriver. This is a JIS, okay? Japanese Industrial Standard. And you probably need one. Uh, this tiny one here was probably the same price as this one. It's just two different sizes is all it is. JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. You ever notice when you have to undo the little screws like this, how your Phillips screwdriver always strips those? Because they're not Phillips. They're Japanese Industrial Standard. If you use something like this, fits right in there, much tighter, okay? You won't strip your screw. Not a Phillips. The bleeder, okay? This is jabbing in your hand for sure. No doubt about it. Got lots of my DNA on this tool. Never know when you might need one. I can scrape with it, poke with it, jab it in my hand, draw blood. It's a beautiful tool, a weapon. I bought this brand new off Amazon. Don't know what happened, but I think it came in quite used. And it's such a junky piece of crap, the end bent. I tried to jam it in a piece of Lexan and bent the tip. But you know what this is. Gouge out your holes in your Lexan for your body posts and stuff. You need one of these too. Just buy a better one than I did. This thing's junky. I can't see, okay? I need a little flashlight because, you know, I see a lot better with a light. Sometimes you gotta scrape some stuff loose, okay? Narrow down your plastic a little bit, maybe a little too tight somewhere. You get a little meaner, you get a metal one. Don't tell mama I've got her nail file, she don't know, okay? You get a little meaner, you can use this one. Exacto knife. This isn't actually Exacto, it's XL, okay? Exacto's a brand. Anyway, hobby knife, okay? Very handy, gets you some extra blades, okay? If you have to get meaner with something, I got the actual utility knife, okay? You get real mean with that one. See what else I got over here to show y'all. Okay, talk about batteries. You need a battery checker. You don't want to tear up your batteries. I really like this little one. Notice there's no alarm on it. It doesn't holler at me every time I use it. So it's pretty sweet, pretty cheap. This one's a little fancier. This one measures internal resistance and stuff that I barely understand, but if you want one with all that stuff, this is a pretty decent one.
Thread Locker, Loctite is a brand. It's Thread Locker, need some of that too. When you're really tight like me, okay, maximum tight ass, you can actually clean your bearings with a little bearing cleaning tool, okay? Bearing goes in, tool goes on, squirt your cleaner in there, spin it around, okay? Of course, you gotta take your seals out first, right? Everybody understands that. Make sure you just got your bearings, your ball bearings you're looking at. You can clean up your bearings, reuse them, lube them up, save a dollar. About all you're gonna save. Kinda quit using it. To clean said bearings, okay? Contact cleaner, this stuff's awesome. I mean, you can use it in a transmission, you get it all mucked up or whatever, it's a mess. This stuff works great, a little pricey, but it does work great. Silicone spray, WD-40 works also. I like silicone spray better because it doesn't attract as much dirt and dust, but you can take plastic like an A-arm that looks bad, that's old, and you can soak her down with this and clean her up look like a brand new car. In fact, if you have a used one you're gonna sell, I'd highly recommend uh, scrubbing it down more or less with something like this. It makes it look way a whole lot better. Y'all know I love me some shoe goo, huh? Shoe goo, drywall tape, carpenter's tape, whatever this stuff's called. Use it on my bodies all the time. Saved me a lot of money in the long run. We was talking about batteries a while ago, you need a charger. There's a gazillion different chargers out there. I don't know which one's best. I've used two or three different ones. Some of them I like, some of them I don't. This one's fine. Please get a bag, okay? Get you a LiPo bag. If you're gonna charge a battery, put a battery in the bag, okay? It's dangerous, catch on fire, burn stuff down, no good. If you solder, if you want to do some on soldering, you should. You need to solder. This is a mighty big soldering gun. I'm not real great at it. Uh, the little pencil ones with the point don't work so good for me. So I like to bring the heat, all right? So I got plenty of horsepower right here. I can flat catch myself on fire with this. If you don't keep your tip clean, no good, okay? Heat it up, solder, clean the tip off, okay? You, you need one of these. And solder, got to have solder. I'm out of solder. This is the best I come up with an example. Too thick, too thin probably. I need to buy some solder. To hold the things I'm soldering, all right? It's a couple of vice grips. Now I learned something. If you clamp this too tight on what you're soldering, it becomes a heat sink. This starts absorbing the heat from the gun, no good. So you wanna barely get a grip on whatever you're soldering so you don't suck the heat right out of it. Clay pigeon. You know how handy this is for little screws and stuff? Okay. Put your little stuff in your clay pigeon, depending on which car you're using. It's awesome. I can buy a hundred of these, five bucks, plus we can shoot them in the backyard. It's awesome. Now, I try to carry, if I go hiking, a couple extra body clips. Of course, these are too small for tent scale. And then you best carry you one of these or two, too, the uh, little wheel nuts. Sure enough, that's what you're going to lose, and you're going to be shut down without it. All right, magnetic cup. I don't really like these. I don't like all my nuts to get magnetized. Mama don't like that either. So we stick with the magnetic cup. And what I do use it for is to magnetize my driver. You can lay that in there overnight. Now this will be magnetized for a little while. Pretty cool, works good if you need it that way. All right, I think I've touched on about, oh, if you like to hike, you need one of these. Gotta have a Camelback, man. Stay hydrated, okay? Plus, you can actually strap your truck to this, pack it too. Check out Instagram. Got a few pictures last time I went hiking. I was packing my Traxxas around on my Camelback. It worked great. So, I, you know, I hope maybe that helps you a little bit with your tools. You know, obviously you don't put all these tools in, in my bag when I go hiking. I don't carry them all. I just carry a few, but this is the kind of stuff that I've had good luck with especially the mip man the mip is the way to go the bondus has the best warranty uh, as far as you your hex wrenches or drivers that's that's what i would go with okay so y'all get your tools in gear take care of your rcs get out in the yard and have a good time all right take your kids exercise y'all have a super fun time come back and see us next week